2024. Hard chemistry. Please don't watch if it's going to cause you any stress. Don't earn any money from this. It's all for non-profit. And of course, these are just my guesses. Not official SQ answers. We'll find that out in August. Let's jump in. I have already marked these. Let's run through this super quickly. Um, you can pause at any time, of course, and compare your thoughts to my answers. First, ionization energy is removing a single electron from a mole of gaseous atoms. I wonder how much detail you need to get to the mark. This is just basically in the data book. Um, explain why the melting point of phosphorus. I have no clue how they're going to allocate these three marks. Phosphorus exists in P4s, which is 4 lots of 15, giving you 60 electrons per molecule. Nitrogen is just diatomic. So 20 electrons, 28 electrons, sorry, per molecule. Much weaker LDFs than this one. But how they're going to allocate the three marks is a very good question. Do you need to mention the nature of LDFs? It doesn't say that in the question. Would have expected that perhaps for three marks. What do I know? Excuse the noises, I'm very sorry. It's late at night, I'm tired, I'm going to rip through this nice and quickly. Basically, these are the bonds that you break. These are the bonds that you make put them together, and that is the delta H. According to me, which of course could be wrong. Here we have a calculation on the percentage yield. It's a two to one ratio. We're starting with um, that number of grams. Uh, we're gonna make that number of grams. We have uh, sorry, that number of grams would make that number of grams. We have this number of grams, therefore you're going to make that number of grams. You can do it by moles, of course, as well. You can do this by moles. Percentage yield of how much you actually got over how much you should have got times 100. I got 77%. Carbon is a reducing agent. That's a tricky question, actually. More like N5, but... No, maybe not. Maybe not, actually. Um, molar volume is a case of we have got 280 grams divided by GFM about 10 moles occupies that number of litres. Now the molar volume is the volume occupied by one mole. So basically that number of litres. That's just a definition time. This here, what we got here, we've got 65 grams, which is the GFM, would give you that number of kilojoules. We have 80 grams, therefore, that number of kilojoules. Don't forget the negative. As per usual, units in the question, don't put it in the answer. This is a, an interesting one. I'd love to see the um, marker's report on this one. N3. They are sort of assuming that you realise that's the azide group. Or maybe they've said that and I've missed it. And because it's Na, N3, there's one of these for every one of these. So this is one plus. That must be one minus. Tricky one, though, actually, I think. That was my balancing ratio. Unusual, but totally doable. This is a fascinating one. Is this a hangover? from the dim and distant past, when silicon dioxide was actually mentioned in the course specification document. It is no longer mentioned. I did go and check that. So, an interesting one. Let's see how well people do. I have no idea how the marks are going to be allocated. Uh, silicon dioxide is a giant covalent network, therefore, if you want to melt it, you're trying to break covalent bonds. What do we have here? Sodium azide and nitrogen gas. In, oh, don't have a weird ratio here. That's really weird ratio. 1 to 1 1.6. Um, so 65 grams would have made uh, 24 litres times 1.6. You've got 80 grams. Um, so my calculation show 47.3. You could, of course, do it moles wise. That's what this is here. This is the moles equivalent. Same answer. Fine powders have a high surface area, more collisions per second, therefore a faster rate. I have no clue 
how they're going to allocate the two marks for that. I should get myself a button that says I have no clue. I just press it many times tonight. It is late at night and I'm very tired. This I thought was a really nice one. You can talk about oxidation, you can talk about reduction, you can talk about the three oxidation, uh, the chemicals, you can talk about the colour changes, the structural changes. Happy days. Let's do a quick face reveal. There we go. Amino acids forming proteins, always forms water as well. I think this is a condensation reaction. Uh, essential amino acids cannot be made in your body, you must get them through your diet. Denaturing is changing protein shapes. You can pick from any one of these. I'm lazy, so I picked the left hand one and I reconstructed the NH2 and the C double bond OH. Uh, hydrogen bonding to the keratin, you can pick from any of these regions that I've circled, not from that one though. This is an old question, I've seen this before, um, where you have to calculate the area of values. It's problem solving of course, we've never heard of this in our life. Come back in advanced higher and you'll come across this. So I reckon that is, a pr is the answer for the RF value. This has been asked before as well. If there are four amino acids but you're only seeing three spots, there must be two of these spots with the same RF value and they are simply on top of each other, so you only see one spot. Uh, this the most polar is the shortest distance, um, which will be threonine because it has got a hydroxyl group. It's the most polar. I'm not sure which of these two answers are possibly both. They will accept they are high energy food per gram, and they contain fat soluble vitamins. That I'm not even going to talk about that. The ester link is present in fat soils because they're esters. This one, I'm going to press my button and say I have no clue how they're going to allocate three marks. There's lots of these explained fully in this paper. Oils have multi... You can read that. I don't have the voice to say it. So you can say it that way, or you can say it vice versa. Good word. Bromine water test. Uh, no change. Instant decolorization. Do you need that instantly? Not entirely sure. Let's wait until August and we'll find out. It's an atom or molecule with an unpaired electron. Who was I chatting to just before the exam about this? Can't remember. Somebody asked me just for the, on the, the morning of the exam. This is an initiation step because you start with a molecule and end up with two radicals. Free radical scavengers react with free radicals forming stable molecules. I don't like this trend in chemistry where they're asking you to vomit up a definition straight from the course specification. I'm not keen on that. I know biology tends to do this. Please don't end up like that, SQA, in chemistry. Explain fully why vitamin E is more, so, more suitable than vitamin C. Vitamin E, according to the diagrams off the page, vitamin E, as you can see, is entirely non-polar and therefore will dissolve very well in oily or fatty foods. Vitamin C has got multiple OHs and therefore is nice and polar and will not dissolve in your oils and fatty foods. Goodness knows how they're going to allocate that. Chop that H off, replace it with sodium. Put the charges in if you want. Don't think you have to. Uh, there you go. That's why we use Soblitz detergents. Not really relevant to Scotland, but relevant to the south of England. That's it. This one here. Is, wasn't this asked already in the multiple choice? Can't remember. It's late at night and I honestly can't remember. Three units. That's your answer. That 
is your ester methyl octanoid. Now, <laughs> excuse me about that glass of water. Do I have enough voice to tell you a story from the dim and distant past? Once upon a time in chemistry, we had to know about a set number of experiments. They were called prescribed practical activities. And this was one of them, making esters. And you as pupils were required to know the exact details of this experiment. These were deleted from the course. Now, I'm not going to accuse the SQA of asking stuff that you no longer needed to know. I'm just going to say I could not find the requirement for this particular experiment anywhere in the course spec. There's another one later on that there is in there. This one, I couldn't find it. Maybe I'm just being stupid. I'm getting old. I'd love to know how many people have actually done this. We did this in the class. What I've done down here is I've done the Love Island version. Um, what we actually did in our class, of course, is we had the proper version. We had a smaller test tube in here filled with icy water and jammed in with a paper towel. This was called a cold finger and was acting as a condenser. But this version here, totally fine, according to the SQA. Uh, there you go. This is without the catalyst. This is sneaky. This is a reversal of what they normally do. They're hoping to get you to trick you into doing one lower. That's not the case. You've got to do it higher. Oops. I have no clue. Once again, my button. I have no clue on how the marks are going to be allocated here. Emulsifiers contain a non-polar part and a polar part. I'm guessing you're going to have to say what they dissolve in, but this is purely a guess, I'm afraid. This is why you can't use this for accurate marks. <sighs> On the highly unlikely event that anybody from the SK is watching this video, I was quite good at organic chemistry at university, and I don't know this reaction. But what they want you to say is that edible oils will, will react with glycerol to form emulsifiers. And I don't think they do. But that's fine. Let's keep them happy. This experiment here is absolutely mentioned on page 24 in Research and Chemistry of the course spec, so I have no problems with them asking details on this one, unlike the last question. The mass of water would have to be kept the same and pop a draft shield around um, the equipment, uh, so that will keep some degree of heat into this equipment. Cm delta T divided by the mass of the fuel will calculate kilojoules per gram. 41.8 is what I get for that one. Um, this is just, um, have I slipped into the maths department? Because this is purely a maths question. Uh, they sometimes do that. 12.75 is what I came out with. Problem solving. Um, salinity. I came out to follow the formula, you get that, you get that as milligrams per litre, they want it in grams per litre, so divided by a thousand, <clears throat> and you get that. Excuse me, glass of water time. Standard solution, accurately known concentration. <coughs> I'm guessing for the two marks, you they want you to know that you rinse it with the seawater and then discard that, and then refill it back up to the line. Why would you... <laughs> Why would you add an indicator to your titration dough to tell you when the reaction's finished? And we're throwing out that one because it is not concordant. Um, this is my titration calculation along with a little diagram here. Feel free to pause that and see if you come up with the same answer as me. If you don't, it's quite possible I'm wrong. Uh, this is the number of moles times the GFM times the fact 
that they want you to do one liter and that's the number of moles in 10 centimeters cubed, hence the 100 magnifier. Oh yeah, another one, <laughs> press my button time. Ding, press the button. I have no idea how these marks are gonna be allocated. Water contains hydrogen bonding, which is the strongest van der Waals force. Um, chloromethane uh, will have a permanent dipole, permanent dipole, certainly, but that's not as strong as, van der, as hydrogen bonding, so therefore you'll have a lower bonding point. I have no clue how they're gonna set that up. Another nice open-ender. Talk about equilibrium and how your one, two, three, change the pressure, change the temperature, change, add or remove a reactant. Um, if you fancy it, you can throw a catalyst in the fact that it won't change the yield. So it's a nice question. I like this one. Happy days. Did I just hit the camera there? Sorry about that. Uh, the mass of chlorine in kilograms is required 1,600 kilograms. They're playing with units here, aren't they? That's grams, that's kilograms. You can do it by moles, or you can do it by proportion. You get the same answer either way. This, I did not think, was a great question, SQA, because all you've supplied, the only information you've supplied it's the fact it's a liquid at room temp. Now, I would have liked you to show me some conductivity information just to outline the fact that it's definitely covalent and the liquid improve, it shows that it's molecular covalent. Not great. Is that the best you could do? Atom economy, that's my calculation. That's my answer. <laughs> I apologize for cutting these shorter and shorter, but it's very late and I'm very tired. That's my equation. Interesting here. Yeah, they've done the same trick as they did just half a question ago, where they're doing kilograms again. So if you struggle with that before, you might not do well in this part either. That's not the sort of thing that used to be done anyway. This is done by proportion, or you can do it by moles, and that is, I think, my answer. Argon atmosphere, group 8, unreactive, I'm going to guess, is to stop magnesium reacting with oxygen in the air. Uh, this is an interesting one. More up-to-date one, I'm not sure. It saves you buying magnesium. Although electricity is not exactly cheap in the real world. Um, also, carbon dioxide, can that be sold as a byproduct with a greater value than the, what was a byproduct? Magnesium. Magnesium chloride. Yeah. Maybe CO2 is more expensive than magnesium chloride on the sale. I don't know. I'm not sure. Honestly, I'm not sure. The very last question is all problem solving to do with nuclear magnetic resonance. Come back next year. And you and I will have a look at nuclear magnetic resonance spectra. That, I think, is my answer for that one. And a name for this compound. There is only a single type of hydrogen, or a single type of hydrogen, and there are six of them. And its formula is that. So I'm going to go with a name. Hey, read the question. Read the flipping question. It is propanon. Which leads us to this graph here. That should be the height of three. That should be the height of two. And we're done. Thank you so much for listening. Good night.